Hi, some time ago I made a video of how to set up this Rectron UPS. This is branded Rectron. There are many companies that put their branding on the UPS. The point of the story is I'm going to explain to you why this system does not have a suitable battery bank. Right, the model I'm referring to is the 6000 and the 10,000 UPS. So on the 6 kVA, the battery bank is at the bottom there. And on the 10 kVA, you just got the UPS and you'd have to buy your additional banks. So over here, you can see I've got three additional banks plus the one in the unit. So that gives me four banks. And ideally, I should be able to get about eight hours on the, on the load that I usually have. Now, how this UPS works, it calculates the amp hours of the batteries times the battery bank. And then it works out the usage and it does a calculation to tell you how much battery backup time you have. Now the problem with this UPS is even though I've got so many battery banks, they did not last. And I will now explain to you why this setup does not work. Right, I've drawn a diagram to demonstrate why this UPS has a problem with its battery backup. Now each battery bank has the batteries laid out in series. They are connected in series. So you have your 16 lead acid batteries. They're connected as follows, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, and the final battery goes back to the UPS. So all you're doing is you're saying 12 volts plus 12 volts plus 12 volts, dot, 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 and 16 times 12, you should get a minimum of 192 volts. So the input to the UPS is 192 volts. Now that's how the battery bank internals are. So how the UPS works is it measures this voltage. Now under normal circumstances, it'll be at least 192 volts. Then as you're using the UPS on batteries, this voltage will slowly reduce as these lead acid batteries discharge. But the thing about lead acid batteries is they're pretty good at maintaining their voltage. So for example, 12 volts, even if you load the lead acid battery significantly, it shouldn't go below 10 volts. So what happens is the UPS is actually measuring this voltage and I'm not sure the exact amount, but let's say at 165 volts. At 165 volts, the UPS knows that the battery bank is now discharged and it will have to disconnect it. Otherwise, it will run the risk of destroying those batteries. So here are the problems. The first one is not all lead acid batteries last for the same amount of time. You might find that one falls out of service. Now what I mean by that is its internal resistance breaks down and you find that the voltage here goes to say 7 volts. So now you've got a 12, 12, 7 and then maybe another 7 and maybe another 7 and what ends up happening is these batteries start to get depleted a bit quicker. So let me take you to the bank layout. The bank layout is as follows. Each bank is actually daisy chained, which means that they're actually connected in parallel. So there are your 16 batteries. So this whole setup here is one of those. So there's your 16 batteries and then you add a battery bank and there's your 16 batteries and then another battery bank, there's your 16 batteries. See bank one, two and three. Now this is all connected in parallel. So what happens is if this bank was bought in 2021 and it's brand new and the batteries have full capacity, but what happens if this bank here was bought in 2018? Now what we found with lead acid batteries is they reduce their capacities quite significantly every year between 10 and 25% a year. So if you've already lost, let's say 50% of the capacity here because this battery is close to three years old while this one is brand new, what's going to happen is this one is going to drop its voltage much quicker. So instead of being, let's say, 205 volts, it's now 190 volts. And this one over here, maybe you bought this, uh, maybe this one was bought in 2020 and it's still in fairly good condition. And this one here wants to be at 200 volts. But this one over here is brand new and it's blasting at 205 volts. Now, because this is a parallel circuit, you cannot say 200 volts, 190 volts, 205. No, the voltage there is the same voltage there, is the same voltage there. So what ends up happening is you find that the good battery is now compensating for the poorer batteries, now taking the voltage to say 200 volts. And as this battery decays even further, maybe it wants to go to 165. So maybe there's many batteries inside there that have dropped its volt drop considerably. And what happens is this battery is not only feeding the UPS, it's actually trying to maintain the voltage of this battery bank and that battery bank. Remember that this voltage here is the same throughout. So what you end up doing is you start depleting the brand new battery 
to compensate for the older batteries. So what you're supposed to do is always change the battery banks at the same time. Don't have some old batteries with some new batteries. Uh, the other thing is inside the battery bank they should have definitely had a voltmeter and a current meter and that should be fed back into the UPS should differentially load these battery bank but they wouldn't be connected in parallel they would have all been connected directly as their own circuit into the UPS but then the UPS would adjust the current drain from each battery bank so what we would find is it would be able to balance the current gain instead of having one battery bank working much harder than another battery bank therefore depleting the one bank at an increased rate so what should have happened is each bank should have been independently controlled measuring the voltage and the current and then using a differential circuit what it would do is it would adjust these batteries based on the condition of the battery bank. What that means is the current would be added here but a MOSFET driver circuit here or a triac whatever you want to use would adjust the amount of current that is flowing through to the UPS to the load. Now this obviously would cost a lot more and that's probably the reason why they don't do that. So overall I've had some bad luck with this layout. I went from 8 hours backup time to 4 hours backup time to 45 minutes backup time and then eventually to as bad as 15 minutes for the same load. So here I would have a 500 watt load and I would get 8 hours and check out this, it went all the way down to 15 minutes. That does not tell me that it's just lead acid batteries getting older. This tells me that the batteries were actually getting damaged in this layout. That is what I think the problem is with this UPS system. Alright, thanks for watching and cheers.